The evolution of your marketing will be the catalyst for the evolution of your business. And the evolution of your business will provide you with the freedom to focus on the evolution of your life. This is Evolved Marketing with Andre and Brian. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Evolved Marketing Podcast. My name is Brian Brewer, along with my host, Andre Dermachev, or co-host, I guess I should say. And we do have a special guest today. Now, the cool thing about this special guest is both Andre and I know him personally. Andre hung out with them at ClickFunnels headquarters in Boise, Idaho. I've seen him at Funnel Hacking Live when we were backstage waiting for our awards, plus We've been in contact via the socials and Facebook messengers for quite a few years now. Uh, The story of this gentleman is incredibly interesting, mostly because of the transformation, where he started and some of the goals he's accomplished recently. When I first came across today's guest, uh, he was literally blowing up on the scene. He was blowing up in the ClickFunnels community. Because he had done something that not many people were willing to do. He took information that people needed. He found a gap in the market and he gave it away for free. He created a free course that helped people get started with ClickFunnels. And because it was good and because he was so willing to help and because he filled that need, I tell you what, it seemed like everybody in the ClickFunnels Facebook group, which was probably around 160,000 markers there that marketers at the time was recommending this guy. Hey, if you need help with click funnels, go find this guy. He's got a free course. Well, that blew up his brand. He's never looked back from there as far as I can tell. Uh, but it also helped him make a lot of money. I'll let him talk about it specifically, but I know he went from right around almost nothing to six figures, I think in about 90 days. Don't quote me on that, but he went fast because he had gotten so much attention because he was helping so many people. So it's going to be a very interesting story. We'll start there and then talk about a new achievement that he just unlocked, which is really cool. Uh, But I'll let that come from him as well. So without further ado, let's welcome to the show uh, our friend and one hell of a marketer, Doug Bouton. Welcome. What's up, everybody? Thanks for having me today. And yeah, what an intro. I appreciate all that. And it's cool to reflect back on and just hear it and... Yeah, I'm excited to dive in. This is going to be really, really good. Yeah, you have an interesting story too, because me and Brian can relate to you as well. Like we're both from the food industry. We both worked uh, at restaurants as well. So when you were working at the restaurant, you know, you thought that was going to be it for you, or did you have bigger plans out there? Like what what got you to get what got you going basically to to get out of that business? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I think everyone should do it. I think everybody should be involved in some kind of service work related job. Uh, at some point, even if you plan going into entrepreneurship, it's just, I think it's shaped everything I've done, you know, that and, and going door to door and being customer service and sales and the restaurants, like all that has like really helped me find my work ethic and drive. And, um, but anyway, yeah, that I knew that that wasn't always going to be it. You know, maybe at one point I was like, I want to own restaurants, maybe. And then, you know, um, I always had multiple restaurant jobs, by the way, um, sales jobs, restaurant jobs. I was always working. And I saw like three of the restaurant owners that I'd worked for in, the, in about eight years span, all of them, I'm not saying every restaurant owner is miserable, but you know, they get to choose that, but they were. And it was like, I don't want that kind of life. And it seemed like you had to have multiple just to be even profitable. And, you know, people are taking from you, uh, walking out off the job and leaving with food and you know, booze. And it just, yeah. So I knew that that wasn't it. So there was a part of me that knew that I wanted something greater. And it certainly at that point, wasn't going to be anything involved with the restaurant industry. So I know you came from the restaurant industry and you wanted to, to get out. So you started trying new things. Now in the introduction here, I talked about the rapid rise to success that you had when I first saw you, but let's be honest, it's kind of like the overnight success, seven years in the making. I know for a fact, Sure. That there wasn't instant success the first time you tried something and helping people set up their ClickFunnels accounts and funnels and build funnels was not the first thing that you did. I think you are at some point in credit repair and and then you what what are some of the things you tried before that initial success that didn't work, but also share with us maybe the lessons that you learned that help you have the massive success once you finally found that thing that hit. 
Yeah, I love going into this because I don't think a lot of people know the story. I've shared it, but I think people kind of forget. They just want to like believe that it was like, yes, zero or actually negative in the bank to six figures and, and record time in 2019. But really, um, it started for me back in like 2012. Actually, my brother recently just um, went through some of the things I left back in Connecticut. I moved from Connecticut to San Diego uh, three years ago and left a lot of stuff behind. But he went through my bins because he's starting to donate some stuff and get rid of it. And he found a check for... Uh, $10 and 12 cents. It was my first ever online check. It was for a company called ACN. So that was 2012, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, I was just dropping out of college. And back then I was going door to door selling office supplies. I was working restaurants in the evening and my grandmother who co-signed my student loans that I was falling to look on said, you need to go do something like, you, you know, you have so much potential. You're doing all these things. And she brought me to a meeting at Crown Plaza Hotel. It was like one of the hotels here uh, back east in Connecticut. And um, it was a company called ACN. So I watched these presenters come up and like you could go sell you know, cell phone services and all these other, you know, things. And I'm like, absolutely, I'm in, let's do this, you know, and I got all excited. The next day, literally, the next day I'm signed up, but I'm also on the phone with someone talking about America approved energy services. They were deregulating energy. And I was already onto the next thing. And that pattern continued. I'm not even joking for like, felt like eight years. Um, every other month, I was onto something new and bigger and better. Talk about shiny object syndrome at its finest. And yes, yeah, sometimes I had overlap there, but I felt like it was because at that first meeting I ever went to in uh, ACN, they were like, you know, the average millionaire has seven streams of income. So I'm like, all right, I need like six more immediately, <laughs> you know? And, um, yeah, I just let that kind of happen for quite a while, but I'm grateful for all of it. I failed forward. You know, some companies that I was promoting for doing work with, I built up big revenues, but what I found was that if I didn't own it, it was gone relatively soon, right? They changed comp plans or, you know, they changed their company structure and everybody's gone. And that's kind of what the network marketing industry looked like for me for, for those eight years. But I learned about websites. I learned about funnels, offline marketing, online marketing. I learned what it took to build teams. And, you know, it really all led to where I am today. And um, there was a moment there around 2017, where I just kind of gave up on all of it and just, I knew I'd come back at some point, but I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to go focus on my career at the restaurant. That's where things started happening with, you know, I was doing marketing for them, um, planning their events, selling tickets to their events and things like that. And um, I just wanted a break from all the noise, you know, all the things uh, that just, you know, family and friends asking, is this going to be the one, you know, like almost kind of mocking you without knowing it in a way. So yeah, that's uh, it's, it's been a journey and I would say really didn't click until 2019, January 2019 is when things really took off for me. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people get that shiny object syndrome that you that you just mentioned. Um, I got it too as well. But I guess one of the positives that you just mentioned as well is that you learn so much from like going from one place to another, you know, websites, marketing, all of that. You were already getting all those skills into your, basically your database, you know. Um, at what point the you find click funnels and I'm sure that was a catalyst of your 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 business, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It was they were just launching. Some people say it was like 2015, 2016, but I don't think I actually found them and really stuck with it until 2017. And that's really where um I saw an ad. And in this ad, at the time I was actually building out my own website and trying to play around with WordPress and optimized press, I think it was called for landing pages. And I just couldn't figure it out. I'm not a technical person. This ad caught my attention because number one, they're in an octagon, like a fighting rink. And they're sitting at these two desks across from each other. And one is on a, a laptop, you know, building out a, a landing page. And the other one's across from that guy. She's building a landing page. And like within 10 minutes, she had a complete website or landing page complete. And he had just like the header. And that was kind of their advertisement. Like, hey, you could do this without tech, without, you know, all this. And I'm like, whatever that tool is, is what I need. I signed up and you know, I must have started and canceled my plan several times after that, just because I didn't have money. I told myself, I don't have $97 a month to pay for the software. And the truth is I'm out every weekend doing God knows what, <laughs> you know, like it's just funny, our priorities. But anyway, um, 
I really didn't stick with that till about 2018, 2019. That's when I really started using ClickFunnels for myself and, and for the restaurant I was working for. They were my first affiliate sign up. Um, they said they need a website. They want their menu online. They want a way to collect birthdays and anniversaries and grow their email list to sell more tickets to their, their wine dinners and their beer dinners, all the things like that. So that's what I did. That was like October, 2018. And we, within like one or one or two months, I actually have the sheet somewhere around. Me. I still keep it pretty close by. Let me see if I can find that. It's fascinating. Cause this is what I did. I got them the results. I think I waited like one week. I'm like, I got results. I'm going to go print this out. I'm going to go show it to other restaurant owners. I'm going to go sign up restaurants for my marketing services. So I didn't even give it like literally a week. Um, but anyway, the ad right here, it's, it simply says, someone has a birthday this month. Yes, you. Come celebrate with us and we'll buy you dessert. Click send message to claim your free voucher. So um, just a picture with with a, a dessert on it. Um, but yeah, I targeted 21 year old uh, upcoming birthdays, 21 plus upcoming birthdays, uh, live within 10 miles. Campaign was run from October 8th to October 14th, 2018. Total spend was $33.28. Got 20, uh, 84 emails and Facebook subscribers through chat bot. 40 cents cost per lead. 22 new customers end up coming in spending $1,724.80. ROI was 5,182, right? So now I took this um, and we ended up getting much better results for that over the the, the, the long haul there and um, getting people in to book events, all kinds of stuff. But that's how I got my first ClickFunnels sign up. And I then showed people this uh, restaurants in my hometown and surrounding towns and literally just duplicated the funnel, duplicated the campaign. And before you know, I had eight clients by the end of uh, 2018, January 9, 2019 is when I... Um, really kind of went full time in that direction. And were they paying you an upfront fee at the time or were you like on a monthly no. retainer? Or <laughs> no, I was just like, just pay for this software thing and you know, I'll take care of this. I, you know, honestly, I think the, um, it's funny because when you start an agency and mine didn't last very long, I'll go into that next, but, um, especially with where I was at, I really just wanted the ClickFunnels affiliate income. I wanted them to pay for that $2.97 a month. I get the $118.80 per account. I want to get to 100 accounts. So I'm making you know five-figure passive income and get that dream car award and all the things. But um, in the beginning, I just I just wanted that. So I'm like, let me just do this. You don't got to pay me. Just pay for the software thing. They didn't know what the heck I was talking about. Um, I think eventually I started doing website builds. So like, got to kind of just give them what they need. Uh, or what they want and then tell them what they need. So like, I didn't want to go into them and say, Hey, you need funnels and you need ads and you need traffic. Cause they look at me like I'm a crazy person. So I'm like, Hey, you don't have a website or your website isn't very good. Or, you know, you don't have a, I wouldn't say that, but you don't have your menu online. All they want is their menu online and people seeing it and coming in. So I would lead with that, build it out. Take me like one day because I literally had the template. Uh, they would love it. Usually most of them. And then I would then have the conversation with, Hey, we got to get some traffic coming in. Are you cool with spending $5 a day? You know, and that's, that's really how I went out and um, got my first several clients with, with ClickFunnels. Yeah. That's super interesting because you learn, you learn the skills you get me and then you utilize it. And then at that moment you weren't full online, but you were still, you know, teaching people about this online opportunity. So that's super amazing. And then since then, I mean, you've been able to win that two, two, that, the card, the dream car award twice, right? Yeah, yeah, dream car award. Um, that's what happened next. So again, like my last day at the restaurant job, by the way, was uh, November thirtieth, twenty eighteen. So I quit right before the holidays. Um, put in a few months' notice. So they knew I was going to be leaving. I said I'd stick around as long as I could until they had someone come in and replace me. I was kind of uh, bartending, uh, serving, managing, and running events. So like I kind of was all over the place, and they they had a hard time really finding a manager that they could keep. Um, but anyway, it's different time for a different story, but, um, I still stayed as a, um, a client client T relationship with them. I still manage all their website. They actually still, if you go to their website today, still use click funnels, which is really cool. Uh, four, four and a half years later, whatever it is. But I, um, I got full time with that, but through the holidays, you know, December, even into January, 2019. So December, 2018, January, 2019, I really was starting to chase checks. Like literally people weren't sending me money and the restaurant owners like see me after the holidays. And I'm like, 
kind of need this now. Like I'm really like, I quit my full-time job. This is my only revenue source. And, you know, I end up going negative. I was negative in the bank throughout the holidays through January, February, March. It really wasn't until um, I went all in with the uh, affiliate model because I asked myself, what do I love about what I'm doing here? Well, I love when people pay for their subscription to the ClickFunnels. I love getting that affiliate commission. How do I go get this to a hundred people using ClickFunnels through signing up with my affiliate link? And of course, if you guys, get, I don't know if you guys are watching the video, some of you guys are listening, some of you guys are watching, uh, get this award, right? The dream car award up here behind me, which basically is when you send a hundred referrals to ClickFunnels, um, they'll sign, they'll pay for your car of your choice. And, um, and it comes with a great passive revenue stream as well. So um, I've had my ups and downs with that affiliate program. You know, we could go there if you guys like to. I'm still a huge advocate of it. I think it's the, one of the greatest, world's greatest. Um, I know that both of you guys have gotten involved with other ones. Um, and, you know, it's not my primary focus anymore, but I still love that passive income. I can't help but get behind their big launches. And, you know, um, just recently they had where I met Andre was a 2.0 launch, you know? So uh, they flew us all out. And I just think they really, they do try to their best to take care of their affiliates. So that's something I respect about them. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's been a fascinating journey uh, to, to not only the dream car award, but, you know, going further with using their software for myself and going for the two comma club award. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm kind of in the same boat. It, the, the 2.0 launch uh, made it, difficult for me to focus on their affiliate program because it was confusing to my referrals, my leads, my clients, my customers, whatever you want to call it. But I still use it every single day. I'm still a customer, still recommended. I already have my tickets for Funnel Hacking Live 2023 and all that stuff. So I think they're a fantastic company. Obviously, Russell Brunson's a, a genius marketer who's probably an even better communicator and teacher. But what I want to talk about is that sales funnel mastery, I think it was called. Yeah which is really the catalyst for you hitting your goal of getting to the dream car and 100 referrals. And that is the thing or the program that everybody was tagging you about. Go see Doug in a sales right. funnel mastery. And the reason I think it's so interesting to me is that because it mirrors my experience. When I was in the restaurant industry, I had just quit. I had sold some blogs, made a good chunk of change, had the confidence to get out of the business and go full time with affiliate marketing or digital marketing. I knew how a little bit how to do drop shipping. I knew how to set up Shopify stores and run Facebook ads. So I was like, ah, I'm a genius. I'm going to create a course and sell it for $9.97. So I created this drop shipping course. And then I was like, oh, I don't have an audience. Who am I going to sell it to? So at that moment, I decided to give it away for free. And long story short is I blew up kind of like you did. You blew up on Facebook. I blew up on YouTube and my life has never looked the same. So if you could really quickly, for the benefit of the listener, just take us into why you decided to create a free course. I even think you have a web, you had a free webinar for the affiliate program in that course or, or associated with that in the follow-up. And like, what did that look like? Why did you create it? Was it always going to be free? And how did it help you outside of just getting leads, if you, if you can dive into that? Yeah, this is great. Um, I know I go on tangents and I could go in direction. So I love that you're reining me back in. Uh, <laughs> this is good. Yeah. When I first wanted this goal, right. It was really by the holidays. I knew I wanted out of the agency model with restaurant owners chasing checks. It was a nightmare. I'm like, what do I love? I love this affiliate income. How do I go get this, this dream car word I keep hearing about? How do I get a hundred referrals to click funnels? So back then they had a website with everyone on a website. You could actually go to uh, what's your dream car.com. I think it's still up, but back then it would look different. There was everyone's face on there and their name. And I'm like, I think even their website. So I was going and just following all these people, especially the last, you know, 10 or 15 that just won. And I was following them on, on Facebook and social, mostly Facebook. That was kind of my platform of choice still is. And I joined their communities and I just started seeing, wow, they all have a Facebook group. That's fascinating. Getting their Facebook group. They all have some kind of training and they're all usually some, some kind of course. And for me, I just try to find like, what's the the slice that I could solve. What's the gap in the market I could solve? I'm not an expert on this ClickFunnels thing, but I built a lot of funnels and I spent a lot of time in this editor and I understand things that people might not like. Um, even like the domain names and the things like that connecting, you know, um, through Cloudflare and things. But anyway, I thought to myself, 
if they have been doing this longer than me, they have more expertise, how can I go and make my way in here? And, you know, I know that there's millions and millions of people that could use help. But when you get locked into this like small bucket of ClickFunnels marketing world, uh, it could seem like it's such a small, you know, but it's not like there's an abundant world of so many people that could use this tool. And then I started to change my perspective. So I created this course. And I said, you know what, if they're selling courses out there like this, I'm going to go create one for free. And I just put together really some basic trainings. I think because I'm not like an expert, I don't have this big vocabulary I think that people really took to it and could say, wow, like this guy could figure it out. I could figure it out too. <laughs> and I'm serious. Like that's not really what I believe. Um, and to this day, the same thing. Like I just, you know, I just want to go put my all into it. And I also think that, you know, because of the effort I put in, like you guys got to think if I'm working in a restaurant seven days a week on doubles, that was my life. Uh, I took that hour, those hours and put that into this business. Like I was literally, people ask me what the secret was. You guys, I was literally waking up in the morning if I had even slept and I'd be right in my Facebook group, creating content, talking to people. I messaged every person that joined my group, everyone that logged into that free course and really just kind of kept serving and to the point where like, hey, what can like what can I do? Can I buy ClickFunnels through you? Can I buy the One Funnel Away Challenge through you? And I said, yeah, absolutely. That's going to help me a lot. And here is uh, the link. And I put those links in my group. So in the course, as well as a pinned video, eventually, and the pinned video of my Facebook group was my training and webinar on uh, ClickFunnels and you could buy the One Funnel Away Challenge. And I had a really cool bonus stack that really complemented the problems I found in the market. And the problems I found were everyone's using this tool. Most people were canceling like I was the years prior, like starting and stopping because they couldn't figure out how to monetize. And I'm like, well, here's five main ways you can use this tool to profit. And there's probably more, but for me that stuck out where I could go and build and sell funnels and design funnels. I can go and start an agency. I can sell physical products. I can sell online courses or I could do the affiliate model. So those are the five things I kind of put together in this free course and then eventually uh, elaborated on by going to find the experts to come and teach on it. So we, you know, I connected with Catherine Jones to teach in my 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 first paid version of that course. Uh, Peter Pru on e-commerce, uh, Austin Dixon on webinars and info products, Jeff Miller on agency. Um, there's probably a couple others in there too. So I didn't have to do it alone because I certainly wasn't the expert. But I just wanted to play journalist and kind of bring them in together. So yeah, that was really it. Uh, the Facebook group, the free course, call to actions, serve relentlessly, and spend quite a little, quite quite a bit of time just really talking to people, getting to know them, uh, jumping on calls even with some of them. So, I think that was the work that people don't see. Um, that kind of led to the success that my name kind of took off in those communities. But I think that's really why. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier that you already, since you worked in the service industry already, like food food industry, you already had the work ethic, you know, because it takes a lot of work to to do that yeah, for that's... many years. It, it's a it's a lot on on your body, on on your health. So it's good that you you were able to use that work ethic and use it for your online business as well. And if you don't mind me asking, how long did it take you to get those a hundred um, people? Yeah, I did it by end of um, sixty six days exactly. So uh, January. I want to say like mid January, I really opened up the group. I had about a hundred people waiting to get in just from the conversations I was having. And I could look back. Uh, I still save all these posts in my group, like in my community, I have like document the journey. You could go back and like, look, I think 2000 members in 59 days out of those 2000 members. Um, I got a hundred of them to sign up to click funnels. And it sounds like a lot, but um, like a lot of people for not a lot of signups, but you got to think most of these people already had click funnels. Most of them were already using it. And that's where I was starting to think like, well, I need to do something else. If they already have click funnels and they're not going to sign up for this or the other thing, then maybe I need to build a course that's more advanced, like a, a paid product. Um, but yeah, it was, it was um, just over two months. So by March I had hit the dream car award from launching that group. Yeah. That's incredible. And and then you mentioned that you you started getting you started moving on from the free course model and then you started creating like a paid course right um, and you were teaching almost the same things than the other model like what what was your your mindset shift you know like what what were you trying to to get with this new program that you came out 
Yeah. So with the free product, I, I always know, you know, now I know it to be true. It's like people who pay, pay attention. Those who don't, won't. So I want, I always knew I had to keep it kind of short and to the point. So there wasn't really a lot about me. Like, I don't think it was about, like, it was just like, Hey, you're struggling to connect your domain. Check out this video. I'm going to show you how to fix that problem. And I would just show them as fast as I could. And, um, thinking back now it's like when i create something for free it's like solve the what and the why so for people are always asking me, how do you go create something for free how do you know what to you know do for free versus give away so I teach the what and the why like if you think about my new what i do now with the challenge model and all the things like i want to teach you what the challenge model is why i do it and some some basic necessities and then you know if you want the the assets and the templates and the coaching and the done for you the done with you like that's what people are willing to pay for so um that's kind of what i put together back then without even realizing it um i did have a lot more how to in my free course which you know some people would say don't do that nowadays like just give them the what and the why i think it's okay to give a little how to like let's help them solve some things get them some momentum right um but with the paid product um the way that this this timing worked out, I had um, happened to be gifted a phone hacking live ticket back then, my first FHL 2019. Um, I really, you know, one of the things I did was go live in my Facebook group um, leading up to phone hacking live and saying where I was like, hey, guys, I, I've got this $114,000 student loan debt. I think at the time I'd pay off some of it over the last eight years. I think it was 97000 at that time, $97,000 student loan dropped out of college, uh, just quit my job. I've got these eight clients. They're not paying me. I want to go become a dream car winner. I want to go get the two comma club award. I want to join Russell's inner circle. I want to speak at funnel hacking live. Like these are the things I was saying four and a half years ago. And it was a lot different than what they're used to hearing. Most people are like, you know, renting the Lambos and the, the Airbnbs and the jets. And like, I'm over here like, yo, I'm negative. I got a big debt. Like I want to go get these big goals and I want you to come and support me on my way. And that's what they did. They rallied and I was able to sell a ton of one funnel away challenge tickets. And, um, it really allowed me to go to Funnel hacking live, get my you know flight and hotel. And of course there's a 30 day waiting period to, before you receive these payouts for affiliates. Um, but I took a loan from a friend who spotted me, but it was a rough time at Funnel hacking live. Like not knowing if I was going to have enough money to eat, like literally, and you hear these stories, but like, I remember like it was yesterday, um, trying to be frugal as possible. But the greatest thing that came out of that room was the belief, shifting the belief, like just watching everyone get their awards, their dream car awards or two comic club awards. And of course, where I'm getting back to this, the question you asked is I met a ton of amazing, amazing people who just wanted nothing more to help me. And that's where I linked up with Catherine Jones, uh, Peter Pru, Austin Dixon, Jeff Miller, Andrew Cruzy, and I said, "Hey, like at that event, I said I got I'm doing this thing, and I, I'm here's my big picture. I don't know anything about agency. Jeff, will you come teach the agency portion of this course?" He's like, "Not a problem." And every one of them said yes. I was just blown away by that. Um, they didn't even ask for for me to pay them. They didn't ask for any money or revenue or, or affiliate or anything. Um, but of course, you know, like I did ask them for. Um, uh, I would link their courses below, uh, their section of my program to get them traffic, of course. And, you know, I, uh, continue to send them traffic for about a year and a half, two years, and even probably now today talking about it. Right. And, uh, it's funny. I did bring back sales funnel mastery curriculum and a new membership I have because people were asking like, what does it look like? We want to see it. And it's been archived <laughs> for so long, but it's actually, people could go watch it now, which is really cool to see, um, so yeah, free versus paid. Sometimes you might give all your stuff for free, all your knowledge. I say, do it and then go find the experts to bring in. Like they're going to say yes. Some might say no, but like, keep trying. People want to help. And um, for me personally, like if someone asked me to come teach a module in their program, I don't care if they're brand new, if they got a big goal, big vision, like I love being people's first podcast episodes. I love being people's uh, trainings in their groups. Cause I, you know, I'm taking a, a chance. Maybe they give up the next week, but some most don't. And now I've got, you know, this thing that took me an hour, two hours to do, and it's bringing me awareness. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think just don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to go and invite people in to help you make something epic. Yeah, it's really interesting. The pattern of success that you identified for the listener and for us here is, you know, you mentioned you went to 
uh, Funnel Hacking Live and all these successful people that you met were like, sure, yeah, I'll help you out. No questions asked, not asking for any money. You mentioned how it was your goal just to serve and people are just coming to you like, hey, man, can I like buy your through your affiliate link? And, you know, the same thing has happened to me. You know, if you're just trying to serve, it's like people will be like, hey, I'm going to buy this thing. I want to make sure I have your affiliate link before I do so you get credit. And like so many affiliate marketers are struggling to get people to buy their stuff. Whereas other affiliate marketers are just sitting here having people literally ask them for their affiliate link. And, it, and it's all about serving and helping other people. So after, you know, you, you do this first sales funnel mastery and you get the experts to come in and teach. And that was your kind of first real dive into paid programming. What was the journey from that point to where you are now? Because I definitely want to get into what you're doing now. Uh, with your challenges, because it's super interesting. You're definitely a leader in the space, the go-to guy for challenges now. So maybe if you can just kind of tell us, uh, you know, in a, in a short minute or two, what that journey like, were there successes, were there failures? If so, what did you learn and, and how did you end up where you are today? Yeah, if you go for the longest time, like I think even now it's like, you know, we want to look at where we're at and have the big life purpose, the big business, the the purpose business. And I can't tell like what that looks like, but I know what I'm doing right now. And I know it'll show its face, but I had the same kind of thing happen last, you know, uh, later that year, 2019, like I was loving the affiliate side, but I'm like, I want to go do my own thing. I got sales funnel mastery, but I'm not going to be known as like the sales funnel guy. It's like, that's Russell's jam, but what's next for me. And I started paying more attention. Uh, but for me, like when I sales mechanisms, right? Sales strategies, a lot of the programs I was investing, I started to invest heavily into programs. Um, spent the majority of my first million dollars in sales back into, you know, programs and rightfully so. Like I I got a lot out of it, but a lot of them said, go build the sales team, you know, book calls, sell, sell over the phone. And I tried it. I just it wasn't my flavor. And when I see what a lot of the people I respect online do, it's they were hosting events um, and selling one to many. I'm talking high ticket items. Like you see Russell selling $25,000 programs, $50,000 programs, one to many. I don't think I've ever gotten a sales call with anyone. I don't even know if they even do sales calls over there. So I'm like, you know what? I know I'm no Russell Brunson, but I'm going to go do this thing. Started running a five-day challenge, March 2020. was, I believe, our first one. And it's a five day event, one hour a day. By the end of the week, I've got everyone kind of there and, you know, feeling momentum. And I'd make an offer. Um, my first offer was, you know, a thousand dollar course, but now we've been able to sell programs as high as, you know, done free service as high as $50,000 through these five day events without sales calls. And it's remarkable. Um, and I think it's just through doing it over and over and over again. And in fact, I was a part of a mastermind back in 2020 uh into 2021 and they saw me doing this thing and they asked me doug what are you doing like you're not following our protocol you don't have a sales team you're doing this thing like can you come teach in our mastermind the model that you're implementing and i'm like at the time like yeah i just learned by watching all these other people doing it like i'm not the expert like but sure i'll wing it um i taught that module in his mastermind and all of a sudden all the the biggest results that were coming out of his mastermind were people that watched my training. And he said, dude, these people are having like six figure days. Like you need to go do something with this. You need to build a program on this. This is what you're going to be doing. And I fought that for, for a long time. It was almost like literally another year until I started teaching the challenge model. And, um, it, it you know, I just wanted to keep doing the thing. I didn't want to just go and teach. But I'm grateful that now um, I've tested. I'm just a, someone who, and like you guys, you guys like to test and we're always doing different things. I tested free challenges, um, hybrid challenges, paid challenges. I've tested um, 100% organic, some some with paid traffic and, you know, with gamification. Uh, but really, it was always the same thing. How can I go out there and solve the biggest problem I see with this model? And the problems I find are low show up rates, low engagements low completions, low conversions, you're pouring your heart into this event and it's not getting the, the results. So how can we go out there and solve that? So we just started testing a lot of things. And uh, to this day, I'm still doing different things. Like we make offers on different days and, um, you know, I have my 36th live challenge coming up and I feel like I'm still like not done 
testing different things. I don't think I ever will, but um, it's been fun. And, you know, this last, you know, I've done um, this, the last 10 have been the same challenge. Usually I switch it up. There was a sprint there where I did a new challenge on a different topic eight months in a row and, you know, nearly killed my team. They were like, dude, like, this is a lot of stuff. Uh, but it just proves like if I go out there and create a brand new challenge every month, a different topic with a different offer, then I know people could go out there and do this, but they're afraid to look at this model that seems like a lot of work as a solution. But the way I look at it is when you when you compare the other alternatives and booking calls, closing calls, I mean, I, I've enrolled 25 high ticket clients in one month. Do you know what it would have taken me? And even if I have a big team, what it would have taken for 25 clients? I'm talking probably minimum 100 calls if you're good i'd say for 100 to 200 calls that's 100 200 hours of time uh and most of that time you won't get back and most of that time spent on the phone with professional excuse makers and people that just aren't even a fit so i could talk all day about why i love the challenge model but um yeah it's fascinating what we're doing what we're going to be doing next and i just don't see this model you know, people say, oh, email marketing is dead. You know, this is dead. Funnels are dead. Website, it, it's it's all just marketing something new, right? So I just, I don't see that this model could go away because it's true connection. It's true serving. And I'm a fan. Yeah. You mentioned uh, gamification, right? Like when I made you uh, uh, the mastermind for ClickFunnels, the 2.0 launch, you were also talking about gamification with your challenge and everything. So it's like you find a way to make it fun for your students, for your members. And you also do like giveaways. You do contests like you were you're able to give them some points for, you know, for engaging. Right. Um, you want to talk more a little bit about that? Yeah. I mean, if you guys look at our backgrounds, we're all the same. Like what's on your walls? You know what I mean? Like um, someone asked me what my success pattern was and they basically there's eight or, or more i'm not sure i never got too much into the conversation but um i thought about this like when you achieve things you've achieved you look back in your your last year, several years or whatever it is decades and what were the moments where you had the most amount of success what are you most proud of and for me it was always a contest always some kind of recognition i thought that was very fascinating um that like competition is what where I thrive. And like many marketers, I think we're all very similar in that. So I started to think about this and, and it wasn't just that. The moment it hit me was I was transitioning from a free challenge to doing a paid challenge. And that alone, by the way, solved a lot of headaches for me. When people pay, they really pay attention. I don't care if it's you know 27 bucks to a ticket to your event. Um, you get a fraction of people, but they're going to take it way more seriously. But anyway, um, I pour so much energy into this, just like you guys do in your businesses. And if you're listening, you do too, right? And for me to have a thousand people sign up to a challenge and like maybe a hundred show up to day one was like crushing to me and my energy reflected it. So I decided to gamify and I realized this, the people that were joining the challenge and just going live, introducing themselves in the community for some reason, though that commitment, they were the ones showing up every day, doing the action tasks, um, staying late on the VIP sessions, and you know, buying the offer at the end. So I'm like, how can I create an environment where this actually is required? So I'm like, contest. We're gonna do some really cool giveaways for you to be a part of the contest. You have to introduce yourself in the group. Like I'm running a challenge teaching virtual events. If you can't go live introduce yourself, you're probably, that's going to weed out the people that aren't even serious about this model. So I'm going to pay attention to that. So go live, that gets you entered to the contest. And then every day they would do different things to build momentum and earn these points where um, they could, you know, be uh, recognized and, 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 and win some cool things. Uh, even then I, I went from like a 10%, you know, show up and completion rate to uh around 40, 50%, but I'm like, I know I could do better, you know, especially with a paid paid challenge or paying to be here. Oh, this should be like 80, 90% people showing up and doing the work and finishing this event. Um, and I remembered back at the time, in, like in school where they put you on a team, you know, four or five people, you never wanted to be that student. At least I never wanted to be that student who didn't do the work. You know, you never want to be that one person out that didn't earn your grade. Um, so from there, we started putting people on teams uh, of five. So in our challenges, we would put people on teams after they commit to the process 
and it made it really fun. And we have people that normally wouldn't show up all five days and do all the work, do it because they didn't want to let their team down. And that really was a really cool experience. And people at first, you know, they'll say, oh, it seems like a lot of stuff. But then by the end of the week, they're thanking me because they got so much done and they met so many new people and they end up winning some cool prizes. So yeah, gamification now, um, you know, I'll be honest with you. I don't do that every time I do a challenge now. Uh, I'm just more kind of keeping it simple these days, but it was fun to test. But it's helped me really look at my program and other things I'm doing and how can I introduce gamification uh, into our our clients and to even my life. So it's been fascinating for sure. That's really interesting how you talked about putting them together as teams and you related that back to like group projects in school. And really what you did is, is you shifted the responsibility. And what I mean by that is you took the responsibility off them owing something to themselves and you shifted it to the responsibility of them owing something to the team. And that's something Andre and I talk about quite a bit. When we first started, we don't know if we would have been successful if we were just doing this whole marketing thing for us or the Lambos or the cars or whatever. We owe a lot of our success to the fact that we were doing this for our family, for our children, stuff like that. And it reminds me of uh, one of Dr. Uh, Jordan Peterson's rules of life. And he says, he's got the book 12, 12 rules for life. And he says, treat yourself like somebody you're responsible for taking care of. Meaning if you're sick, you may or may not go to the doctor. If you do go to the doctor, you're, you're probably not going to fill your prescription or something like that. But if your dog's sick, you're going to rush them off to the vet. Like that's our mentality as humans. We will take care of other people more than we take care of ourselves. And you shifted that and you created that, that feeling and you leveraged that when you, when you created groups. So I think it was just really interesting. There's a lot of patterns uh, behind that. So I just kind of want to expand it on that really quickly. So that's really, really interesting. Um, But challenges anyways. Yeah. They've been a huge success for you. You've done them uh, multiple iterations of them Uh, for the most part they've all worked to some degree. I think you've done over $3 million in sales because of these challenges, you, you're you getting people in who are engaged. If I could talk about that aspect of it really quickly, the quality of the audience in the program, and in this case, I'm talking about a challenge, really matters a lot. You said people who pay, pay attention. The other similarity or pattern I can recognize is you found yourself in the ClickFunnels community and you've given a lot of credit to the ClickFunnels community. And that's something that I've heard uh, Steve Larson, who I'm sure you know better than I, I've heard him talk about. It's like when you can tap into the audience that's already primed, that's already an audience of buyers, when you can ride the wave instead of create it, right? Jump on the buzz that somebody else is already creating. Like, do you think about that? Do you owe some of your success to that? And if that is valuable to your business, right? Going after people who are maybe in the ClickFunnels community. How would someone replicate that or look for that in the market? Any insight into that? Yeah, it's so fascinating. I think the first time I heard of a five-day challenge, if you guys look back, some if you guys have a FHL ticket, if you, if you don't, you should. Let's, let's be real. That event will change your life. Um, you have all the replays. They're giving out these bonuses. And I think it was 2019, Ray Higdon went up there and I don't know if it was specific call the five day challenge, but essentially he was doing a five day challenge and showing how to do this Facebook group management and um, community, have a community manager run it all for you. Really fascinating. And then it just started seeing um, Kelly Roach was the f- first coach I heard of teaching this. And a lot of the people that I was, in my opinion, like peers with like uh, Rachel S. Lee and uh, Melissa Ricker, you know, even have gone through my stuff and I've gone through their stuff. That's why I say we're more like peers. We came up together in this journey, started blowing past like where I was at and not to be a comparison game, but like they were killing it. Like, what are they doing? Challenges. Okay, cool. I'm going to go do this too. And I think that's really why I didn't want to just go teach the thing. I think I really wanted like tested enough where I was doing a bunch of things. And, um, You know, even nowadays, like you see uh, people that really run with the challenge title. And to me, I don't honestly just I don't even want it. Like, 
I'm doing it now because I love it and I love experimenting. And I think it's a great model compared to what alternatives are out there. And I'll keep doing it, but I think that it's showing me the next thing. And for me, it's like, well, what can everybody use no matter what you're doing? I don't care if it's a podcast, if it's a webinar, a video sales letter, a challenge. Uh, it's all about performances, not just reading off slides or, or talking to the camera, but you got it is a performance what we all do. And I think it's learned through um, not even like persuasive tactics and methods and stra all the things that you'll hear, but like, what is the art to communication? And um, I'm reading books right now on language and, you know, um, really like studying these persuasive performances of even past generations like uh, Martin Luther King, uh, Martin Luther King and uh, JFK and Steve Jobs. And like, just, it's fascinating to see that they all have these same commonalities but anyway, um, to answer your question, like, how do you go and find, is it, how do you find your slice and ride the wave? Yeah. Like, how I don't do know what the next wave is. That yeah. Audience, like, you know, like if you created sales funnel, funnel mastery and just, and just tried to promote it on YouTube, for example, it might've mm -hmm. done okay because it, YouTube is a search engine. If you created Sales Funnels Mastery and just tried to promote it on Instagram back in 2015, it might have done okay because a lot of marketers are Instagram. But it, I like, I think it just did incredibly well because I mean, you were in the group where the the captive audience was. You were in the Facebook group providing yeah, value, and that's how totally. people were finding you. And now, like, I kind of see the same thing with the challenges. Like, that's I know you find a majority of your clients, or at least a majority of your, your traffic kind of from Facebook, I think, correct? For sure. And challenge specific and, groups. Yeah, yeah. And that's because you're hanging out where the customers are. So that's kind of what I wanted to just get any insight yeah. into like, yeah, how important is that? that. And yeah, yeah. How yeah. do we, how do we tap it's into that? It's funny because even now, I mean, yeah, you know, we gotta be excited because I see where we're going uh, and I'm open book. I will talk about this all day long because there's a right way. There's a wrong way. And I think that the way I look at it is there's always a slice to be served, meaning like some people just don't want to do the thing. And I think the person that will do what other people won't will win because it's not that we well, like very rarely is there someone that can do something that we can't do. Like most people could, you know, anyway, um, even recently, I just started running ads for the first time in a long time. Like it finally is actually doing something cool. We're running traffic to our uh, challenge toolkit. So it's a free training. Again, going back to my roots, free training. In that free course, people can uh, come across what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and then invite I invite them to come to my event. I'm like, come to my challenge so you can actually not just learn it here, but see me do it. And um, we're getting a lot of signups for our challenge just from that free course. But anyway, on my ad, someone wrote, you know, this little comment that I was going to be, you know, um, delete or block. I'm like, no, what? I'm going to make, I'm going to actually like let, let it hang out there and answer it. And I wish I could pull up right now, but she's basically this woman said, I found out later she works for this guy, but said, why not just learn from Pedro? And I'm like, well, yeah, that's amazing. And I ended up answering it basically like everyone's going to learn differently. Everyone's at different parts of their journey. You know, yeah, if you want to go work with Pedro and it's, you want, you know, his attention, it's going to cost you a hundred thousand dollars, rightfully so. The guy's a genius, right? But like, everyone's different. Some people want to learn from someone that's a week ahead of them, a month ahead of them, a year ahead of them. Uh, some people want to go learn from the big guru in the space or whatever it is. Um, but the way I look at it is when you hit that certain level, like Russell and Pedro and Tony Robbins and Dean Grant, they're not going to, you know, maybe they would, but most of them, they got a lot going on. They're not going to go back there and like, you know, spend their, their entire day answering questions and, um, you know, really, helping someone that doesn't even offer them to join the programs, whatever you guys can see where I'm going. So my point is like, you can go and serve the back end. It's a win, win, win. You're helping that person spread their message and their model. Um, you're helping the people that can't get the answers without investing a ton of money. And you're helping, you know, yourself by putting yourself in that position to go out there and educate yourself and learn. So a lot of what I do is, uh, you know, the challenge model is the way I, I, I love marketing right now. And there's a lot of people teaching the challenge model. 
you see a lot of people do this, this kind of like this piggyback of this trend right now. And I think where um, you could stand out is finding your unique differentiator, solving the problems that most people that are learning this model and are giving up on the model are facing. And also just getting super loud and staying consistent and doing it yourself, continue to do the model that works. Don't just go and teach it. So those are all the things I think that will make it make you unique when you do find a trend. So now um, when it comes to servicing, the, the what is the gap, right? I see that a lot of people go and launch a challenge. And the last thing I want people to do is bomb their challenge the first time and give up on it. You guys, my first challenge was, wasn't that great, but I've kept going 36 times now. Uh, every month we run the same not the same challenge, but you know, um, the same model. And I'm grateful for that. I feel like I'm just getting started. I'm gonna keep running that model and and, and test different things. But I think it's um yeah, just really solving the problems for yourself and then sharing your solutions. And well, what I, I like you really problems. said is yeah. what I thought was really cool, and I'm gonna turn it back over to Andre here, or you, you I didn't mean to interrupt you, but no, you good. said I serve the <laughs> you said serve the back end. And that was really cool to me. Like, that's exactly what you're doing. You're find a leader in the space who's developed this audience and you fill the gap or serve the back end or be the number two and then, yeah. or, or the, or the guy that you can get access to, because like you said, you're not getting access to Russell unless you're paying fifty hundred thousand dollars You're not getting access to Pedro Odeo, who also runs challenges unless you're paying a hundred thousand dollars. So serve the back end. I thought was really cool or, you know, be number two. And, and if you're okay with that and you're one, I mean, there's a lot of money in that. I mean, you've done very well and, and it, it, you tap into that buzz. So re really cool. I think, I think that's what I was looking for. And that was a great way to put that's, it. That's solid. Yeah. And you know, it's like, I think it'll lead to the thing you do want to be number one in. Cause I still don't know what that is, but it's, it's, the next thing I, like I mentioned is showing up is presentations and presenting. And I could, I could throw together a slide presentation and, and minutes notice. Like it's just the way I like to work. But, um, and do I have my one number, number one in that? Probably not, but it'll show me again. One day I'll have the thing, the category, like I'm going to go own this space uh, and and go all in, but I'm not in a hurry. So I'm just, yeah. Yeah. Another way of servicing also is giving back to the community, giving back to other people. And that's something that I really wanted to talk about or, or I wanted you to share as well, because it really tells you who you are as a person and something that you do is you actually help people in Mexico, correct? Like you go there in missions and something that you did, there was a contest for the 2.0 launch for ClickFunnels and it was a competition, right? And you were able to get second place in the competition. And you were telling the people that when you were promoting, you were saying that, oh, I'm going to give this money away to, to people in need, right? And that's something that really tells who you are as a person. And that's something that you do, which I really... I love that you do this type of things, you know, and yeah, like when did you start uh, giving back to the community, especially, specifically in Mexico? Yeah, specifically Mexico. Um, I moved to San Diego uh, 2020. So like March, right before COVID hit, actually. Uh, 2019, I had been coming out here for some masterminds. I started investing myself a bit and uh, fell in love with San Diego. Every time I came here, I wanted to delay my flight or I would delay my flight. And then I started um, looking at the future and I'm like, Hey, I have eight visits in 2020. I might as well just move there. And one of the visits was for a house build. I kept hearing this community called the greatness gathering, do great things uh, led by um, Michael Sherbakov. And uh, he had some really cool things going on. He's done like 40 of these house builds and I just couldn't, everyone kept talking about it. So uh, I went to one of his Wednesday night meetups. He used to meet up before COVID um, and it would be a mini mastermind. And one of the problems I brought to the table there was like, I'm thinking about moving here. I don't know what it looks like. It's kind of like I'm moving across the country from Connecticut. I made the decision to move here in that meeting and found my apartment the next day. Um, but anyway, like it was because of that community and what they were doing. And like most of them were very successful business owners doing really cool things for the, for the community. Uh, back east, like I love my family and friends, but I felt like I need to to, to get a change. But um, anyway, my first house build got delayed because of COVID, but um, end up going through uh, once everything kind of settled down. And I went down to Mexico, about only two and a half hours south of San Diego. It's not, it's like in our backyard. And we entered this village and the families that we were there to help build a, a home for were on a waiting list for a long time. And usually it's required that they have kids under five 
Most of them are living in a really small area, probably half the size of my office here. There's not usually a, a, anything on the floor. It's usually just dirt. They're all spent, you know, sharing one or two beds in this in this thing that whatever they could find to make make their home out of um, materials and tarps, and it's not healthy, right? But anyway, um, it's just surreal when I experienced that. We could go down there and build a house in under three days for them, and watching their, you know, them walk in for the first time and how happy they are and what it does for not only their family, but their future generations. It was just mind blowing. So um, definitely a movement that moved me. And now I decided I'm going to go out there and build a hundred homes. And I think that we all have these goals, you know, dream car award to comic award. The next logical step would be, I want to go get the 10 X award, you know, and hit a mil- 10 million online. And I'm like, it's just, it just has to be something different now. Like I have to go with like a new aim. And I felt like that was a really good contribution that it won't just be me alone. It's going to be me bringing people together to help me build those hundred homes because selfishly, I just love meeting entrepreneurs. I love connecting with them. I love introducing them to this, um, this experience and just getting over. I think the, you will feel like brother and sister for with the people you're meeting that you just met in three days. Like, man, I've got my best friends in life from just to, from connecting at these events. So yeah, I want to, I'd love to bring you guys down there and your people. And um, it really just changes your perspective. Talk about gratitude and, you know, blessings coming into your life after experiencing that. So uh, I've been on four, uh, built my first one, uh, sponsored my first one in April. And then we did two in June with that check, uh, Andre, that you saw, and I remember being in Boise with you. I'm like, dude, like if I get this, I didn't expect to be top five. So like the fact that I even had a check coming my way, it was all bonus money. At the time I was second place. I'm like $50,000, man, we could build like four homes down in Baja with this. Um, end up uh, in the last hour of the, the contest, slipped into the third place, but still I got $25,000. Um, I brought that check down to Mexico. We got a cool picture. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but um, with the, the whole group, I brought all my clients, my team, some great friends. And um, yeah, we've got 97 more to build. So anyone that listened to this, you guys want to come and experience something that will really change your perspective on life and um, give you bigger purpose. I'd love to have you get involved. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's really, really cool. And um, you know, it just shows you the, 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 commitment to service on any level and and every level um, really gets people excited and brings people together and gets people interested. And and when you say you got third in the ClickFunnels 2.0 launch, I mean, you were going up against some massive marketers with massive followings and massive email lists. And the fact that you were able to hold on to third place is, is pretty incredible. And, you know, that's because of the what do you say ne- since 2019, the four years of service you've put in with the ClickFunnels community, the fact that you were going to turn around and, and serve more with, with the winnings or the reward of the prizes is pretty incredible. And, and that all leads to amazing things and it, it helps uh, get people excited about paying attention to you. And that's part of the game is it's hard to stay on top. You know, I've always said the thing I'm most proud of is not the money I've made. It's the fact that I've been able to do this for 11 years because it's hard to stay in this game and you, you are growing and you stayed in this game and it has even led to a situation where there was kind of a vote for who would be in the next or a speaker at phone hacking live, which I know is one of your big goals. And, and I think I found out a couple of weeks ago that you are in fact now going to be a speaker at funnel hacking live. Right. It is announced. It is known. Um, I'm blown away. I, yeah, as I mentioned those goals in the beginning, right? Pay off my debt to Comic Club Award, Dream Car Award, Russell's Inner Circle, uh, Funnel Hacking Live speaker. It's been been my my top goals, and it's interesting now. And I'll go into like this last bit here. Um, something that happened after that was announced that like almost like took away everything. It's just uh, the human mind and and. It's fascinating, but um, yeah, I am super excited. Russell actually asked me to speak about that experience. Like how have I been able to do these five-day challenges, win big competitions among people with millions of people on their list with a, my email list is, you know, it, it hit 6,000. So it's like 5,000, just hit 6,000, but we just scraped it again. Uh, what I mean by that is we've removed bounces, unsubscribed. If you haven't opened up an email in 60 days, you're gone. 
I don't want a big list. I don't want to pay all that money to software that if you're not even open my email. So um, he wants me to kind of talk about how have I been able to cultivate this, you know, audience and um, I guess people that just, you know, can get back to my, whatever I, I'm doing at the time. Um, so, and I'm trying to figure out what it, what it looks like, but I think it has been what we talked about here in this episode is like really just serving, giving back and um, creating wins every step of the way for the audience members. So even on a small scale, like when I did the, the, the big launch for these competitions, I'm giving out bonuses for you just registering, uh, give out bonuses for you being VIP, I give out bonuses for you taking the offer. And I'm always trying to create these things that will give more than what they're actually investing and they complement whatever the thing is trying to solve, right? Every investment is just, we're trying to solve something. So um, it's going to be a fascinating thing. I've only got 13 minutes on stage, so I got to figure it out. Um, I'm really excited about it. And I don't think you guys will be able to see this, but I'll, um, I'll show uh, Brian and Andre my background on my computer has always been since 2019 uh, a Photoshop photo of me on stage. And every year I've changed this 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, uh, which is funny because I never changed to 2023, but um, here we are. <laughs> now you're going to have a real picture for this. For I'm going to have a real picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Super excited. Um also kind of freaked out to be honest with you it's a big station it, yeah it's like you know i'll go into this and i haven't talked about this publicly at all so even just like two weeks ago talk about like identity transitioning or whatever you want to call it but i went into this like i feel like fight or flight freak out <laughs> You know, and I I didn't post if just yesterday or this week was the first time I posted on social media in over two weeks. Like I've never gone in four and a half years, five years now, not posting at least every other day, two weeks, you guys of not posting anything. And then, um, you know, people took notice, especially, you know, my loved ones are like, what is going on with you? And I said, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. And I log in for the first time to Facebook in weeks. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. The last post I made was my big announcement of phone hacking live. I'm like, Hmm. So I feel like, um, you know, I was in a grieving stage, like mourning, like, you know, for you to, to, to break through a new threshold, you have to really kill off part of your old self. And I reached out to some, um, people I really look up to, um, specifically Liz Benny, who speaks at, who spoke at phone hacking live and she teaches people how to make the identity shift of their own lives. And she was giving me some really good advice. Like, Hey, you're just going through this thing right now. You're, you're, you're letting go of the past and um, this happens, but really I've started creating all these fires and all this drama and all these things in my life to take away the thing I earned. So it's just fascinating. If you, if you hit a new level, I really believe that new level, new devil, like part of you is going to try to sabotage that. So now I've just really started looking at uh, the systems. What systems do I have in place to make sure that when I do go out there and achieve some great things, I'm going to set new aims for, I don't have this happen again. Um, but it's been really interesting. The exercise I've been doing, um, writing down all the past things and things I no longer want in my life and what I want it to look like and feel like. So it's been a journey. I think we're all going to have that no matter what level you're at. Um, we all have some kind of form of self-sabotage. So it's been interesting working through that, but I know I'm here to stay like uh brian 11 years remarkable it's like uh lifetimes in this industry and i know that uh this won't be the first or last time i come up against something great that um scares the heck out of me so it's like how do we work through this how do we grow who do we surround ourselves around and um just constantly improving one percent better every day yeah i mean that's just a testament to the journey and and what it what it takes you know i i deal a lot with beginners because I teach affiliate marketing. So, you know, a lot of times I'll hear, well, I, I can't do this because this came up or I'm not sure if I can accomplish this because of this reason. And it's like, you have to just go through it or find a way to fight through it in the beginning because it's never going to go away. doesn't matter what never. level you're striving to get to. You're going to have doubts. You're going to have things you don't know. You're going to have things that come up that get in the way. And 
And it's just part of the muscle that you build as an entrepreneur. You know, the gift of entrepreneurship, as they say, is the person you become. So, well, your, your story was amazing. Um, you know, I, I, I'm going to have to rein it in because before long, you're going to be the, the, the longest interview and we do appreciate it. And I could talk to you for hours, Doug, part of it because I've known you for so long, but also because you have such an amazing story and, and you do the work. Um, so you can give a lot of insight into, you know, what it takes to reach the level that you have. So congratulations. I appreciate it. One thing we always do, and you can, you can decline if you have things to do, but we always like to turn the tables and offer our guests an opportunity to ask uh, any, a question of, of Andre and myself, if you want. And oh, so if I do, if that is something of interest to you, now is the time and we'll, we'll go ahead and, and share what we think. Yeah, I think we're on a topic. I have specific questions, but I think I'll, I like this where, where we've ended up um, because I believe truly everyone can do the amazing things that, that we've all been able to do. You guys have done some incredible things. Like literally when it comes to full-time freedom, it's like we get to choose, you know, we get to say we could wake up today, um, make breakfast with our families and like cancel our calendar if we really wanted to, you know, but anyway, um, I believe everyone has the capability and the power to work through and do the work. And I think that it's, a, it's not easy. What do you think it is or specific, like a specific story um, that you've had to work through something that you came out on top and is why you've achieved the results you've gotten. Like, I think we all get to choose. Do we get to, we get to say, I choose my identity and relieve this past version and step into this future version. And when we do that, I think that's really what gets us. Like you said it perfectly. Uh, the journey of entrepreneurship is, is who we get to become, right? Do you have a, a moment in, that you could share with the audience that you were, you almost maybe didn't choose to change your identity or, or a specific time you did change your identity that you stepped out on top from? We'll start with um, Andre or Brian, whoever wants to go first. Yeah, um, for me... Um... Life was hard uh, before I started the online business and everything, right? Like right before everything started, my wife was sick, you know, um, I couldn't go to work, you know. So basically I go to the point where I was desperate, you know, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I needed to do to get to the next level. Um, but I used that to learn something new, you know, like I, I didn't just, you know, went through the motion where, okay, my life sucks. I'm just going to stay right here down, right? So I just literally had to shift from there because I, had, I was responsible for taking care of my daughter, my wife, you know? So at that point, I did it for them. You know, I wasn't looking for myself. Like I didn't care about my health. I didn't care about my mental health or nothing. I just care about taking care of them, of them you know? And then thankfully, that's when I found this opportunity. But like, I was desperate, you know? I, I went online to to look at like, what, what can I do? Because I couldn't pay the bills. I couldn't do anything like to support them, honestly. And I, I was getting to the point where I was going to just give up, you know, and just went all in with this. And thankfully, this was the thing that actually helped me get out of the situation that I was. So as I, I, in a way, I did come out on top because I was able to make the money that I needed to make. And I learned the skills that I needed to learn in order for me to never get that low again. And that's what I, that's basically what I, what I did. And a quick follow up there. Um, so it's like you're, we're all similar kind of in a way, right? We were, we were kind of running towards success to uh, get out of a painful situation. For me, it was like student loan debt, all that stuff. Yours sounds like it was a little more serious too. And not to compare at all, but like, I think sometimes it takes a pain to go out there and really push people through their limits. Do you think you're still driving your success from a, um, getting out of pain or are you, are you now seeking like a bigger aim? Like, what would you say your new aim is? Have you recalibrated or taken a moment to reflect back and then say, Hey, this is why I do what I do now. Yeah. Um, the, the whole serving thing, actually it's, uh, it, it's a big part of everything. Right. Um, I actually took a step back from promoting in English and I was, uh, now I'm servicing the Spanish community, oh. you know? So I created everything in Spanish funnels in Spanish um, copywriting course in Spanish, you know, content creation in Spanish. So now my goal is to serve that community. And yeah, I had to make that big switch. It wasn't easy because I was so comfortable promoting in English. I was so comfortable with my accounts blowing up in English. And it was, 
I had no experience not even creating a digital product, you get me? So everything was just from scratch, but I knew I didn't want to just be another English course, you know? I wanted to go back to my roots, which was the Spanish market, you know? And I, mm-hmm. I saw that there was not that many things of that uh, when I first looked into it. So I decided to fill that gap. And right now I'm doing that full time. So That's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know we got to wrap and I can ask you a lot more. Well, I'm going to take that off camera. Though. I want to ask you some stuff about that. Cause I think there's some cool things we could do. Yeah. Um, yeah Especially so- with a, with a Mexico. Yes. community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will, I'll, I'll be done to serve your community as well, so especially cool. the Spanish speaking people yeah. that, that you have. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So cool, man. Um, and yeah, I know yeah, we're probably definitely in the longest episode, right? Um, Brian, same thing to you. Um, a moment in time where you had the decision to step into a new identity and you did. And um, what did that look like for you? Yeah. So the the thing that jumped to mind first was, you know, just a quick backstory is, is 2016 is, you know, prior to that, my affiliate marketing strategy was creating product review blogs, ranking them in Google and earning commissions but it wasn't scaling it. And it was really, it got me to the point where I had two jobs, my restaurant job, and then I'd come home and create the blog and stuff like that. And it was life changing for me. It, you know, it got me from, it got me to six figures per year combined with the restaurant job and the blog income, but I knew it wasn't going anywhere. So I sold the blogs, got a little chunk of change, which was, was more than I thought I would get, which was a blessing. And then, um, I mentioned the free course that I created, the drop shipping course that I was really originally going to sell, but then I decided to give it away, obviously populate my affiliate links inside the course, things like Shopify, things like Facebook ads course from trusted sources and uh, started giving it away and created micro trainings on YouTube that linked back to my free course. And it just blew up. Uh, some of it was timing, but another part of it was the fact that I was giving away something for free that everybody was, was, was trying to sell. So I blew up. My YouTube channel blew up. Um, I generated like 50,000 leads in the first year. I you know, made more money than I ever thought possible uh, just in Shopify commissions and the back end offers that I emailed to my list. And it went really well for you know 20, all of 2017 and, and most of 2018. And then I started losing momentum in the, in the drop shipping space. I think mostly because I was losing interest in the drop shipping space. Obviously, as industries grow, there's there's more stuff that goes on. And I was fairly inexperienced at the time. So I, I let that get to me. Um, you know, it's like, oh, I hate this industry. Uh, it sucks. I'm out of it now. Not the marketing industry, but the drop shipping niche or whatever. And so I started um, pulling back from creating content so much and more towards creating programs and trainings and courses to sell to my list because I had a pretty big list at the time. So obviously that was you know, another pretty big windfall because I had this list of people who trusted me that I built trust with over the years and I was selling my own offers. So obviously there was massive uptake and that was great. Uh, And then towards the second half of 2019, um, I think maybe I had uh, oversold my list perhaps um, and started to lose some of the trust. And obviously there was people who just were not interested in anything other than drop shipping. So they dropped off and I kind of destroyed my business. And that was a tough time because, you know, the only thing worse than not having any money is having money and then start seeing it go away. And what I mean by that is I went from making, you know, X amount of dollars per month to 10% less to 10% less to 10% less. And and when you, when you get down to a situation where it's like, oh, I'm only bringing in like four to $5,000 a month now, like that's seems like a lot of money, but it's not when you're, when you're used to a certain level. So I was like really kind of getting down on myself where it was like, I, I failed, right? Like I, I destroyed my business. I self-sabotaged my successful business. Um, and it, I kind of developed that identity of like, boy, I had an opportunity and I squandered it. Um, I wasn't super down on myself because I was like, well, I just didn't know. Like I didn't know what the path was going to look like in the future. And then right around 2020, the beginning of 2020, it was before COVID, it was like February. I, um, at the time, shifted my identity from this failed marketer back to the person who had created the thing that blew up in the first place, right? So I reshifted back to an old identity. 
And uh, a previous guest, I think it was Tyler Wise, who was on the episode, I'm not sure, uh, on the podcast, I'm not sure what episode he was on, but he said a piece of advice that in hindsight directly applies to that. He says, remember what you've done. And at the time, even though I hadn't heard that advice yet, I did. I remembered what I did. And I, I took, I reassumed the identity of someone who wanted to help and serve. And that's what I did. I, I started with a new program. It happened to be Legendary Marketer, which is marketing education course. And I, instead of just creating something, I dove back in almost like starting from scratch and I created this fully optimized funnel, which is, is kind of one of the things that I've done over the years that I've gotten really good at. And I just started creating content with the idea of like, I was going to teach people and show people like what a great opportunity affiliate marketing is. And within months, I was right back on top. Um, some of it was timing. Some of it was the fact that I went back to the identity of someone who wanted to create something great that could serve people at scale. And it was the funnel that I built and the content that I created. And I don't know what it was. It, it, it was just the new energy that came with with the belief that I had instilled in myself. And that's what it was. I had to talk myself into it saying, no, I'm not a failed marketer. I'm someone who's done amazing things that people can only dream of. I can do it again. And yep. I think that was a big lesson. And and I think it was at Funnel Hacking Live where, where we first heard the term or I first heard the term. It's like at that point when I hit success again and six months later, nine months later, I was right back to the most money I've ever made in a month. I had cycled at that point. I had had success, lost it and built it back up again. And now that's my identity that I, that I keep a hold of if times not get bad because they've been pretty good lately. But if they start to maybe start to take down, it's like, no, I've cycled. I know how to handle this. Right. Yeah. I know things are not going to, I'm not, every month's not going to be better than the last month as far as income and revenue. I've cycled, I've done this. This is no big deal and it'll be good again. And that's kind of the whole story of, of how I feel like I'm in a pretty good place now through that identity. That's awesome. Yeah. I think it's, um, I heard the quote, uh, in our weakest time, the strongest version of ourselves is waiting to be born. And I think it's like, we just get to decide, do we let that weakness take over? I don't think that, you know, I think the people that just stay the path, continue, continue, continue. Uh, you're right. You'll cycle again, but you know, you've been there before and you can deal with it and you'll get through it. If you just become stronger and that's how you kind of upgrade your, your operating system, I guess you could say, or your language or your belief. So I do believe that there's something in belief and the language you tell yourself. And last but not least, like, I think what I'm doing right now, maybe you guys have done this too, is like, you know, Brian said it, recognize what you've done already. I got this big blank wall in front of me. I got all the cool stuff behind me, right? But I need this wall's for me. This one's for the people. And in this wall, I'm going to have, I already ordered them like uh, eight by tens of just all the cool things I've done, the people I've met, the things I've accomplished. And like on those tough days, just look up like I've freaking been there already. I've done this thing before. And I think it's a constant reminder that like, go build that wall. Like most people have all their, you know, college degrees and all that stuff. I know as entrepreneurs may not, may not have all that stuff, but like you have your, your degrees, like the things you've uh, you've done and achieved. So I'm excited to get that up. Um, I'll, I'll be posting a photo of it, I'm sure, at some point. But yeah, I think that's a really cool share. Um, thanks for uh, creating the space for me to share. And um, first time I've shared some of those things. So thank you. That's awesome. Well, Doug, we appreciate your time. Um, it, was a, it was a great in interview. Um, before, real quick, before we go, how can people find you? Yes, you could check out a uh, new website coming. Uh, by the time you guys hear this, it should be up. It's uh, dougbouton.com. You could check out all my my stuff. Four, five years in the making, never even had a website. So it just shows you, you don't need a website, everyone. But um, my, um, yeah, dougbouton.com or follow me on uh, Facebook or Instagram. Those are my two platforms of choice that I publish on. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, if you just search Doug Bouton, you'll you'll run into him or pop into the ClickFunnels group and you'll be able to find him. Uh, he's he's a good marketer. He's easy to find. So thanks again, uh, Doug, for for spending time and sharing your story and your insight and, and some of the future things that are that are going on. Uh, thanks, listener, for sticking with us for, gosh, almost an hour and a half. This is a good one. We, we really appreciate it. And we'll see everybody on the next episode of the Evolved Marketing Podcast. Bye, everyone.